All right, so now that my uni term is coming to an end, I'd like to tell you guys about one of the classes I had, which was on LGBTQIA plus history and culture in the US. And we read three different books for that class. Um, Fun Home by Alison Bechtel, Angels in America by Tony Kushner, and A Year Without a Name by Cyrus Dunham. And I'm going to tell you guys a bit about them and my general impressions. I'll keep it pretty short, no spoilers, just some stuff that you might want to read if you're interested in queer stuff, maybe on an academic level as well. Up to you, also for fun. I'll also like tell you guys if they're like for fun type books or more academic type type books. So first up we read Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. And if you like Bechdel, that name sounds familiar. Uh, she's actually the one who came up with the Bechdel test of are there two named female characters who talk about something other than a man for like five minutes. Yeah, that's that's her. She she did that. And she also did this, which is a graphic novel actually. It's beautifully illustrated, like the the art on this is really good. And it is about it's a it's a memoir, so it's about her life, her childhood very much. And it kind of reevaluates her childhood, but from the lens of her known queerness, but also retrospectively looking at her father because she also found out that he was gay and he also died so she kind of looks at his life under the lens of both of their queernesses and how they relate to each other and how things now make sense if you look back at them so it kind of very much deals with past trauma and growing up queer and it's kind of mostly about her father really and trying to make sense of what happened to him and what happened between them and that's it's pretty interesting i would really recommend this like just as a memoir as a graphic novel but on its own like it's really starting to read really interesting now the thing about it is i personally thought this would be more about herself and her own queer identity and coming to find that but it's not this is not what this one is about absolutely not but if that is something that you are interested in, um, we also talked about her other project, which is Dykes to Watch Out For. And that's a comic series, a comic strip series where she talks about actual like modern queer lesbian themes and problems. And that's kind of more along that line. And this is more of a family and dealing with her father and kind of, you know, looking at her childhood. So it's not what I expected. I would have probably preferred to read about a comic strips rather than this but it was pretty good like I'm happy to have read it and as you can probably tell I wrote an essay about it as well and it was interesting to do that so yeah I would recommend this I give it like four to five stars if I have to now the second book that we read is actually a play so this is a script and Angels in America is actually two plays but it's one play but it's also two plays because why the hell not right uh, so it has two parts, both of them can be seen as separate plays and separate works but, and maybe this is just me being a fucking idiot but I couldn't really make sense of them until I was like halfway through the second part, the second play so I personally only see them as one thing and only judge them as one thing so this is kind of a surreal play it's not quite realistic as it kind of depicts one character who has HIV and he has um, cancer but he gets visions from an angel in America who would have thought um, who kind of bestows upon him a task and he has to like see what he wants to do about it and it in general in general it talks about the AIDS crisis and homosexuality and politics in the 80s like um, quite a few of the Republicans in this are actually gay so it kind of queers a lot of themes of the very homophobic 80s so that's a really interesting aspect that we talked about I personally have to say I find this to be yeah I'll, I mean again maybe I'm just fucking stupid but I found it a bit difficult to get into and to understand at first and like 
not just at first, but yeah, I feel like if you're just reading this on your own, you're gonna be a bit lost. Um, we also read some secondary text, which cleared up quite a bit of stuff for me, so if you have access to it, I would really recommend you look for academic um, reviews and essays on this. I think they're really interesting, because this has some fun stuff to work with. So this is like a very academically interesting book to choose. I have to say, like on a pure enjoyment level, I didn't really get the entire first play. I'll say it, I was enjoying it, I was like, this is kind of fun sometimes, but like I also don't know what's going on. Because there's quite a few characters and I'm not sure who's who. But then in the second part, I kind of it crystallized for me what it was trying to say and what it was trying to do. And then I quite enjoyed the second part and I thought that it was really good and also quite fun. And I kind of also finally understood the more surreal aspects because they got more intense. So I was like, oh, that's, oh, I see, I, I got you now, I get you now. So I would only rate it as a whole, and as a whole I give it four or five stars for being, yeah, really interesting to look at and dissect, which we did in class. And then finally we read, which is actually a normal novel, um, A Year Without a Name by Cyrus Dunham. Um, this is, again, a memoir, but an actual written book memoir. Um, by Cyrus and it talks about their gender journey and how their impressions of themselves and their gender and their friends change throughout time. It feels very personal but it also deals kind of with the fluidity and insecurities of gender and your journey which I feel like oftentimes isn't talked about like you kind of to be considered trans you have to know that you were born in the wrong body and you have to be 100% sure all the time of who you are and this kind of very much shows that you're not always sure and you know it's always a work in progress sometimes you feel like this, sometimes you feel like that and it can be really confusing and I thought that the insecurity that is portrayed in this is a very it's a very important aspect to add to the conversation I do have to admit though, I feel like, as you can see, this is very short, I read it within like an hour or two, and it did feel like it wasn't quite refined, there were things missing to me. It, as I said, it's kind of very personal, it kind of feels like you're reading someone's diary in a way, and I didn't always understand why this scene would follow another and how they were connected, and I also didn't quite um, follow all the friends that they have. Like, good for you for having so many friends, but I don't know who all the names are, and I, I honestly still to this day have no idea who was who after all. Um, and also, I have to admit, this feels like Cyrus is still finding themselves. This does not feel complete, like a complete um, look at them and their journey, and obviously you never really do find yourself, but I think in like 10 years or something, I would really love to read a part two or something and see where they're at because this feels very incomplete and unrefined. Um, it's a really good book. Like, it's good to have trans voices and read about them and their experiences. Like, that is very important. And so it's good that this exists, but I feel like for what it is, it could be better and it could kind of go into things in a, on a deeper level, you know, like, um, something I found distracting sometimes was their white privilege, and not just white, but like their rich privilege. Um, they have rather successful artist parents, so they're quite well educated, and they go to all these fancy events of like art showcases, whatever, and they get to, you know, just travel around the world and buy cars and can afford everything very easily, and I feel like that is not examined a lot. Like, they acknowledge that they have quite the um, the privilege in what they can do and afford, but it was distracting sometimes to be like, do you, do you know? Do you know how casually you just said this? Like, hello? And not only that, but some topics and aspects in this are really interesting, like um, kink and gender and that journey and how that intersects and how 
you know, kink might help you accept yourself and how it's easier maybe to admit to things in that setting already. And they kind of touched upon it, they like mentioned it, but they didn't really get into it. And I thought that would have been quite interesting. But unfortunately, it wasn't actually a topic. They were just like, by the way, that happened when I was having sex. Anyway, next chapter. So to give this three out of five. It's good that it exists, but it doesn't feel complete, doesn't feel refined. Would have preferred if it got deeper into things. But you know, I would definitely say if you are interested in reading stuff for fun, these two are easy reads. Graphic novel, quite quite pretty. Can I actually show you like like they're all fully monochrome shaded. Every single page. It's honestly really a lot of labor went into this and you can tell and it's really good. And then this a quick read. A trans voice, a trans journey to look into, really interesting. This, really good, but more abstract and more surreal. And at least I needed some other voices to explain what the fuck was going on. But still, very important. Oh, also, if you maybe are interested in this, but you don't feel like actually reading all of it, or if you feel like you wouldn't understand it, there is a play, like there is both a show, a miniseries, with Meryl Streep, so I'm sure it has to be good <laughs> of this. And also, um, I think the British Royal Theatre or whatever, they have a HD recording of it with Andrew Garfield. I know he's quite popular right now, so if you think you wouldn't really be into this, but you might like it because Andrew Garfield's in it, then um, I know that the National Theatre has it like, on their website, you have to pay for it though. Or, I mean, I am quite sure you can find it on your own, on the internet, somewhere. <clears throat> I'm not controlling you, I don't know what you do. But yeah, those were the, the three books that we read this semester for my queer class. It was a really good class. Like, it was really fun. All of the people there were like fruits, um, so that was nice. And the lecturer themselves is actually non-binary, so... Yeah, you can tell they know their stuff and they are in the community, so they're quite up to date and they they really know how to... Like, they know their stuff, you know, in the discussions as well. It's very clear that a lot of people knew a lot already and we could talk about some really interesting aspects. So, yeah, great class. Good selection of books. I like that it was, you know, not just books, 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 but, you know, graphic novel, um, play, and then a novel book. So... That is some diversity in that as well. Doesn't make it really that boring. And yeah, have you guys ever had a queer class about queer stuff? If so, what was it about? What did you talk about? Did you read any books? Did you watch anything? Because we also watch some stuff. So, oh, actually, have you read any of these? How would you like them? Let me know. And yeah, have a nice day, I guess. Or not, it's up to you.